Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with Daily FX. Today is Friday, October 28th, 2016. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. Dollar index is slightly lower on the day, 0.09% to the downside. Uh, US dollar index, however, is jumping a little bit higher here, due in part to the different weighting of the two indices. US dollar index trading at its highest level, going back to February 3rd. Uh, and it's really due to the fact that uh, the euro is up on the day, keeping DXY underwater, while is, uh, a pound dollar with its heavier weighting here, Aussie dollar, uh, and even dollar yen are coming off some uh, in, in, in respect to their positioning versus the dollar. So uh, when we think about that, then right now it's more or less a, a story of what's happening individually. Um, I think with the pound, the big question of the day and the answer that we've received thus far is to what extent does the UK government have the right to trigger Article 50, and the High Court in Northern Ireland is telling us that there is no uh, uh, verifiable or uh, legitimate legal challenge to stop Theresa May from going ahead and triggering Article 50. So, pound dollars off today. I would say this is not new news, but rather say another event that just further pushes down that probability that Article 50 doesn't get triggered. And, and so, um, seeing as how the government has the ability to do so whenever they see fit, this could get appealed all the way up to the UK Supreme Court. And if that's the case, then we'll have a definitive answer as to whether or not we need parliamentary approval. And if we do need ratification, then all of a sudden this becomes a much more interesting scenario. Pound probably gets a lift off of that, given the, again, outsized uh, proportion of parliamentary members that were in favor of remaining. Now, they probably won't ignore the results of the referendum, but considering how close the referendum results were and how Again, large the portion of remainers were in Parliament, you know, really roughly 70% of all parliamentarians. I have to say that that necessarily wouldn't be a direct shot to get Brexit and Article 50 triggered. Uh, pound dollar here, though, 121.30. Pound yen is also suffering here, 127.70. So something to consider, perhaps a false breakout to the top side in pound yen. And if that's the case, that obviously has some longer term bearish implications beyond the next few hours. Could look for a retest down near that 127 level, about 60 pips from here. Beyond that, if we do break down, all of a sudden you have this triangle looking like a continuation pattern, right, as part of the longer term decline here in both pound yen and pound dollar. And so we've been saying that, and that was a point yesterday when even when the market was rallying, listen, this may not be the opportunity to buy, but if anything, it's going to give us a chance to look to when to sell again. You see here that we tried clearing out those former swing levels, and then we since reversed. And so to me, this is a sign that this is a market that does indeed want to go lower. Uh, often when you see those false breakouts, they tend to lead to full-on uh, reversals. Uh, moving on, though, today we have U.S. GDP due up at the 8.30 hour. Ultimately, markets may be getting a little bit ahead of themselves looking for a bounce in that GDP reading. Current expectations were about 2.5%, but as we'll see here in a second, the Atlanta Fed GDP now tracking index is currently only at 2.1, and they've been fairly accurate, usually within a tenth or two tenths of a percent of the actual reading. And so I think these market participants expecting 3% may be just, again, a little giddy. We have to understand that growth momentum going into the fourth quarter is actually fairly weak. October uh, 28th, we are here, 2.1% on that Q3 GDP tracker. If you go back to the beginning of August, tracking at 3.8% on August 4th. So growth momentum has slowed considerably. I think we'll see that consumption came off a little bit during the third quarter. We should see non-residential investment rebound a little bit. Likewise, given what happened with uh, uh, some of the shipping issues with Hanjin and uh, imports falling at these West Coast ports, probably see that the net exports figure doesn't drag down the GDP figure as much as anticipated. But overall, you know, we're still not going to see 3% growth. In that case, it's still going to be disappointing. It gives you a better, another reason next week to keep rates on hold. For some reason, there's a 17% chance of a rate hike. I think it's closer to zero, if not zero, given the fact that the election is just six days later on November 8th. Today, if we get a good US GDP reading, it would do a long way to dispel the notion that the Fed is hiking just for the sake of hiking rather than hiking because there may be an economic need to. Uh, one thing I'm watching continuously is Aussie dollar, a lot of patience here. And right now we're seeing that this is starting to look like a little bit of a failure here to crack through this trend line up at the top, as well as what could be the neckline of an inverted head and shoulders pattern. We're going to want to keep an eye on 
the trend line here coming off of the recent lows as if we do see a challenge up now and say that 75, 60 area, you get start to get in below the swing lows of the last dip during mid-month. You could very well easily make a case for the fact that maybe Aussie dollar itself is getting ready for the next leg lower. One thing to consider as we go forward now into the fourth quarter, into the, the really the last two thirds of the fourth quarter, and we look towards that December 2016 rate hike for the Fed, is the fact that the Fed's already trimmed down its glide path a great deal. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they trimmed down the, the long end a little bit more. But right now, in the short term, they're only expecting one rate hike through the end of this year. Median rate is 0.6%. We're currently between 0.25 and 0.5. The end of 2017 is 0.9%. So to me, that says one to two rate hikes possible. And right now, if you look at Fed Funds futures markets, only one hike is being priced in by December. So while the Fed is taking a lot of fuel out of the dollar's tank, in turn, we have to consider the fact that now, if economic data does start to outperform, you know what? There's a lot of room for the Fed to start talking up markets a little bit more, and the dollar could get a little bit of a run. So for now, I think I wouldn't look beyond the highs here in DXY that we saw in 2015 or 2016 thus far, up in that level just right around 100, about 130. But if we see economic data start to move, you know, GDP readings start to move in that 3% range, inflation readings pick up, and you know, as they were, they're on pace probably to end the year closer to 1.9% of the headline CPI. Could very well see the Fed start to pull forward those rate expectations next year. And again, with only one priced in and only one two on the Fed's dot plot for now, market and the Fed don't have the dissonance that they had at the beginning of this year where the Fed was talking about four, but the market was only pricing in one. And that's what held the dollar back as the Fed was forced to tamper down expectations and the market was never given the opportunity to get bullish. It's only you have the opportunity to get bullish right now and uh, we'll see if this room is taking advantage of, this opportunity is taking advantage of for the dollar to run higher. Again, GDP this morning, 8.30 Eastern, that's going to be the big one, looking at 2.5% from 1.4% according to Bloomberg News. Personal consumption down from 43 to 2.6%. Overall, again, looking at a reading that would indicate Good, not great, kind of Goldilocks, Fed, all but guaranteed to keep rates on hold next week. Anyhow, this, for those that were holding out, I think this could be the nail in the coffin, if you will. All right. And again, Atlanta Fed GDP looking at 2.1, typically within a tenth or two tenths of the actual reading. They've been fairly accurate the last several quarters. So let's keep an eye on that as well. All right, that's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. As always, you can get in touch with me via the Daily FX Real Time Newsfeed, Stock Twits, and Twitter at CVECUFX. You can always email me, cvecu at dailyfx.com. If I don't speak to you before then, good luck trading the rest of today. Of course, I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend.